Welcome back. It is our seventh lecture of the course History of Bengal Art and Architecture. In our previous segment of this course, we have learned the Buddhist architecture of Bengal. Before that, we explored the ancient geography and ancient architecture of Bengal too. It is the starting lecture of the Islamic architecture of Bengal. In this segment, we will explore the architecture of Islamic Bengal from the advent of Islam to Sultanate to Mughal. As we know, to better understand the architectural history, it is necessary to have a clear understanding of the context of the time. It is true for the Islamic architecture of Bengal too. As like other history of Bengal, the Islamic architecture of Bengal too gone through the historical politics like the colonial and Hindutvabad movement. It is hard at this point to establish an unbiased history of Islam in Bengal, especially the earlier segment of this history, the advent of Islam in Bengal. Though, with some certainty, we could claim that the Bengal was a leading power of the medieval Islamic East and the Bengal Sultanate was the richest country to trade with, according to the European traders. Further, during the rule of Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb, the Bengal Suba was the richest region of Mughal Emperor. It is obvious that the richest country of the world should have significant architecture to explore with. And that is why we will dedicate few of our next lecture on this course to explore the beauty and significance of their architecture. We also know with certainty that presently the Bengali Muslim, those are the people who speak the Bengali language and follows Islam as their religion, are the largest part of Bengali people and the second largest Muslim ethnic group in the world after the Arabs. However, it is uncertain that how within a short period of time so many Bengali people converted to Islam when it happened and why. It is popular belief that Iqtaruddin Muhammad bin Bakhtir Khilji, commonly known as Bakhtir Khilji, was a military general who led the Muslim conquest of the Eastern South Asian region and established himself as the ruler of Bengal and Bihar in 1203. It is further considered as the first step of Islam in the political arena of Bengal. In, in the political timeline of Bengal, it is marked as the beginning of Islamic era of Bengal which ended with the defeated, the last independent Nawab of Bengal, Mirza Muhammad Sirajuddin, commonly known as Sirajud Dola, to the East Indian Company of British in 1757. The timeline is further divided into major two segments marked by the Mughal conquest of Bengal by Jahiruddin Muhammad Babur, commonly known as Emperor Babur, who defeated Sultan Nasiruddin Nusrat Shah of the Bengali Sultanate. The time before the conquest, Babur is named as the Sultanate period, whereas the time after the conquest is called as Mughal. This popular belief coincides with some historical facts and it can be considered as, as partially true. This popular belief also worked as the reference for some Hindu Tubats historian to establish that the first contact of Islam to Bengal was through Sword, which further says that the conquering Islamic force demolishes almost all Hindu Buddhist religious structure during the capture. This is again partially true and there is little argument against this belief. Hindu but Brit historians further claim that during the Islamic rule, the Hindu were converted to Islam and Christianity either forcefully or through promise of economic advantage and at least 60,000 temples were demolished under Muslim rule. However, the traceable demolition of religious structure by the conquering Muslim force is very limited. Professor Eton of the Department of History of University of Arizona, who is widely regarded as an authority of pre-modern India, through the survey of literary and archaeological documents, established that the number of demolition of Hindu Buddhist religious structure is only 80 by the invaders, and there is no traceable forcefully conversion or later demolition during their rule. This is only an example of the twisted history written by the Hindutvabad believed historians and its after effect. 
if this is the case where 60 or 80 is twisted as 60,000, then it is easily imaginable how twisted the architectural history of Islam in Bengal is, as architectural historians have to highly depends on socio-political history of any palace. Furthermore, there could be knowingly or unknowingly some Hindutvabad ideology adherent architectural history too. Keeping that complexity aside, one can say it safely that the Bengal had trade connection with the Arabs and the Greek as early as 3rd century BC. The fame of the textile product of Bengal, the Muslim, goes back to the days of the Arthashastra, which date back to 3rd century BC too. The Arab were the Marken, who mainly controlled the ancient maritime route between Indian subcontinent and Europe. It is very likely that the first contact with the Islam to Bengali people might be through those Arab Marken. If it is happened, then Islam come to this part of the world as early as during the life of the Prophet, before 632 CE. The limited exploration till now and the complexity previously stated provides little evidences to be certain about this hypothesis. However, it is certain that if the interaction between Bengal and Islam was not happened during the time of Muhammad, it cannot take 600 years to reach Islam Bengal from Arabia. We could mark these 600 years as the period of the advent of Islam in Bengal, which paved the path to conquer Bengal by only 17 soldiers of Bhakti Khalzi. However, we do have literary evidences that the people of Bengal were lucky enough to be getting in touch with Sahaba or the companion of Prophet Muhammad. According to Chinese Muslims tradition, Islam was first introduced to China in 616 to 618 AD by some Sahabas. Among them, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas was prominent. This Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas was not just one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad. He was the seventh person to embrace Islam. According to the Islamic tradition, Prophet Muhammad specified ten of his companions who were promised paradise. Sa'd is among the ten promised paradise and he was named at eight. Historically, he is mainly known for his commandership in the Battle of Qadisiyah and in the conquest of Persia. He was later the governor of Persia. So there is little doubt that this Saad was a historical figure. This same account further informs us that Saad ibn Abi Akkas along with their Sahabas returned to Arabia from China in 637 by the Yunnan Monipur Chitarang route, then reached Arabia by sea. Saad ibn Abi Waqqas had to re repeatedly visit China to establish Islam and he was succeeded during his third visit. This route might be the route from Chitayang, Shonarga, Silet, Monipur, northern part of Myanmar to Yunnan. This Chinese traditional account shows clearly two things to us. Firstly, Bengal got in touch with Islam as early as the first quarter of 7th century CE. Secondly, there were a frequent route between Chitayang and Yunnan of China. Fortunately, recently a mosque was discovered at Larmurin Hart of Bangladesh, which is locally called as Abu Akkas Mosque. According to the inscription found on the site, it is dated as 648 C. It is assumed that the name Abu Akkas is derived from Abi Waqqas, from the name of Saad ibn Abi Waqqas, previously stated Sahaba of Prophet Muhammad. This discovery suggests that Bengal has a pause for Saad between his journey from China to Arabia. This pause was certainly used for introduction of Islam to Bengal. Till now, we do not have any other covered artifacts supporting trace of Islam in Bengal during 7th and 8th century. But it is anticipated that when a new group of modern unbiased archaeologists will start exploration, there are many places on the route to have trace of Islam to be explored. Next, we found mention of Bengal by Arab writers in the 19th century AD writings, where the Bay of Bengal was cited as the Sea of Harkand, as the third sea between China and Arabia. After the Persian and the Arabian Sea, this Harkand was derived from the name Hurikal, which was the name of southeastern Bengal since 7th century CE. It is further believed that Harkand was known to the Arab traders and Chitang was already established as well known as Samandar by the Arabs. Bengal continued as a famous manufacturer for its textile, muslin, during 9th 
to 14th century CE and was praised by the accounts of Arabs and Persian authors. It is obvious that Arab merchant and settler settles many parts of Harikal during their long time trading. Chitarang Sandip Nwakhali till Silet were in their proximity to be settled by those Arabs. In short, we could sum up that long before the conquer of Bengal by the Islamic power, Bengal get in touch with Islam, firstly by the Arab merchant and the settler who settle primarily by the proximity of Chitarang, the southeastern part of Bengal. Secondly, by the Islamic saints who followed major trade routes and settled in many inland cities by those routes. This is briefly the advent of Islam in Bengal. Thanks for joining us.